All right, what is going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up multi-paper, but more somewhat properly than my previous video. The other video was getting a little bit out of hand in certain moments and all that stuff, but in this video, I'm gonna show you what I would consider the better setup for multi-paper. It involves a total of five servers, but it's infinite scalable. So we can see here that I got velocity as server zero this is the same skill to make it easy to organize in windows do remember that this can also be replicated within linux as well i only do this on windows because you know it's easier for me to work locally than running on a terminal or that all that right now but this can be totally done in linux and even in third actal just as easily so let's start out with uh, you know configuring each server so let's start with master Right, all the download links and everything will be in the video description as usual. So we go into this master, and I already downloaded the master jar file and renamed it to server just because I have the naming scheme of master here, so this doesn't matter. I just like calling it server because it's server jar. And I'm gonna show you the start parameter. So in this config, in the in the normal sense that even that multi paper recommends you to do, well, at least what they're telling is saying at least is that you're on with double ports. So this port right here. Is default port for the velocity master to, no for the for the multiplayer master to run and if you add a second one that allows you to start a proxy as well but which is a built-in thing with the, the master but in this case we're not going to use it because we're going to use a load balancer in um, in velocity in order to um, move player like you know fill servers e e equally so if we have three servers, it's gonna fill up server. We're gonna, it's gonna alternate the players. So one player is going to server one, one player is going to server two, one player is going to server three. Once that's done, next player is gonna hop on server one, server two, server three, and just keep going, filling up the node and the servers in linearly instead of dumping, letting something decide for it. This is like the normal use case that I normally do when I set this up, and per my recommendation, it's the most common one so this is a super basic jar file you will probably want more than 512 megs for this but since it's just a demo i don't you know i don't need one of that so once you have this done we can basically you know okay i didn't actually save anything there so i'm just gonna don't save that we can head into server one which has the same configuration except here we just run it norm like a like a normal Minecraft start bat file and this one allocated 4 gigs of RAM on because it's still just a demo server and this is where actual players can end up. So now we need to start this once. For to generate some files, you know, you know, the usual stuff. And like loading libraries. Now as you can see as it's trying to connect to the host. That means that's because it's multi-paper connected connecting to log loss 5353 or whatever. 35353. That's because we need to start the master. I even said the wrong port. My bad. There we go. So it, now you can see if we start the master, we have one server already connecting to it. But as you can see here, it says, you know, there's normal server stuff. So fail to load the server.properties, fail to load the EULA the TXT, you need to go with the EULA. Normal common stuff. So now we just agree with the EULA. There we go, and now we can type in master, type shutdown. It's gonna try to shut down all the servers, but they can't be shut down here, so we're just gonna have to do that wipe. And now we start up master again. You can start with starting master, it doesn't matter what order you do it. So now we start each server again. You can see in the other console that it connected. And this error right here is normal because it's trying to it has generally world files. All the world files are not stored on the actual server itself. This is just a blank slate because this is what a server jar basically requires to, you to have in here. But these files are not being used, but they have to be in there. So don't delete them, just let them be. Everything is going to be stored in the master. So that's where you probably want the bulk of your storage. You always want to have a little bit of storage for each subserver, but you don't need a, that much of it. You don't even need you don't need more than like five six gigs of storage. 
the master is what's gonna keep like he's gonna have all the wor world data in it so that's why I recommend to assign most of the storage to the master itself so now we have server 1 there we can take a look at server 2 basically same deal but before we do that we're gonna stop server 1 and actually go into the multipaper.yml file because that has some configurations so multipaper master address that's where the master is hosted right now it's a local host then advert the built-in proxy I don't think we, that's actually required but I don't think you really need to have that but I just leave the default values what we want to do here is bungee cord name because this is not always you know randomly generated we probably want to name it something different so I would just name it server that's zero one and we will go into a little bit more depth in about the files to sync in real life upload the server stop start etc we'll go into that a bit later so now we've done that we can basically take the multiple WML file and just make it easy we just copy the EU file as well and put that into server 2 edit the YML file and instead of saying server 1 it's gonna say server 2 and then in server 3 we're gonna name it you know the same thing we just name it according to which server is which now we can basically just you know start up each server so we have only master right running right now so now we just start up server 1 let that start up a little bit and now we can start server 2 All right, server server two is probably not gonna start. Um, no, it's not gonna. Yeah, because all the ports are different, which I totally forgot about. So that means we have to go into first. Let's configure velocity for that stuff. I already ran this, and this plugin as well is the velocity load balancer plugin, which I will link in the video description as well. This is what allows you to play linearly assign the players to each server, so they go from so. You know, one player one goes to server one, player two goes to server two, etc. etc. I will link that in the description. But now let's go into the velocity.tom and toml. But we're also going to let's see, where is it? We're gonna have to do some more changes. I need to find a specific key, wherever that is. It should be a secret key. There it is. Forwarding secret. We're gonna need this. You can set this. I don't know if this sets it permanent. Like, I don't know if this is random every time or if it's like a static one that's just been set in config. But so you can change this to pretty much whatever you want. So now what we need to do is go into each sub server. So server one, and I think it was under spigot YML, and we locate velocity. If this is even the correct. Nope, it wasn't. So, sorry about that one. Uh, then it's under paper. Uh, paper YML. Wanna scroll down to here, velocity support. Wanna put that to true. And if velocity is in online mode, you set velocity mode to true, or online mode. You set it to true as well. And the secret, replace the, quote, the commas or quotes, whatever you wanna call them, with the secret key. Then we can super easily but there's another function that I can actually set up here as well so we just save the paper and paper.yml and now we go into the multi paper of server 1 and fast sync on startup we just put in paper.yml what that's gonna do now is when we start server 1 we're gonna see here that it's gonna upload paper.yml and that uploads it to the master so now we shut that down, and now we added the uh, some ports. So we don't need to touch the master. What we need to touch is server one, and go into their properties, and set this port to something different. The actual you know connection port, which is default two five five six five, which I need to find here. Nope, that's not it. Um, where is it? Ba -ba -da -ba -da. There it is. Server port two five six five. But for ease of use now, I put it to five six six. And I do the same thing to each sub server. I'm just gonna copy the contents of this file. 
and then I'm gonna find so report over 566 and replace it with 7 and then I'm gonna do the same thing here well you will remember how to do things properly I'm gonna paste in the server of properties file here as well and change this to 20568 these ports can be pretty much whatever you want as long as you know as long as they're firewalled properly and everything you can have this whatever you want because you're not going to connect the servers with the, with the port here so now when that is done we can start up the uh, server 2 as well because this is going to grab the file we need from the master no nope, the uh, master i think crashed a bit so let's start it back up then we go to server 2 because we needed to grab the configuration that we added from the master which is just downloaded, download the paper.wml which has our secret key and config for velocity and now we can shut down that and because of some stuff in windows at least you have to restart the master as well when you're doing that I think it's just a windows thing but now since we have all the files we need here this is just gonna set itself up there we go so now what we need to do i always forget about that so basically now we just go into velocity again well to the velocity config i don't want to reload that and now we can set up velocity so we want to make player info forwarding mode set that to modern And then the port 25565, because we want that to be the port that people connect to. And then we get here to all the subservers. This is important. So lobby one, lobby, we can change that to server dash zero one because that's what we named it in each subserver. This is more of you know differentiating. This this doesn't have to reflect the name that it has within each subserver, it's just for easier to to remember and then we have to change the port as well so next so, so actually so one is 25566 25567 and 25568 and these has to also correspond but what we can do here to make our lives much easier is just remove those and set this one to server one because this doesn't matter at all and try um I don't think this really matters because it shouldn't. Oh, you're right. Never mind. Try has to be. We're gonna have to add in each server, but they have to be in backwards order for the for the proc for the load balancer to work. So we go server three first, server two second, and server one at le at the end. And this you basically just repeat this for as many sub servers that you want to have. So, but you know, always going backwards order. So last, so last server to first server. The first server should be in the end, and last server should be in the beginning, if, if that makes more sense. And after that, that's pretty much what you need to do here, as far as the configuration of velocity goes. If I'm not completely mistaken. So now we just save velocity, and now we can boot it back online and see if it starts up properly. Yep, we have velocity. Now we're going to master. Start master. Master is online. Start server one. Each of my sub servers has four gigs of RAM. Now we just may wait for that one to go. Server two. Yep, and server three. And now we can see that even connected to the external service for communication. That means now we go to local here, we go to, you know, we, we go to Minecraft and type in just local host. I should be able to just hop right, never mind why. Um, why did I get disconnected? What error did I get? Master. Oh, each service in online mode. 
while rip so that means we have to do this so the cool thing with the master as well when we have the subservers you can type in if you type in shut down in the master all the servers should in theory shut down oh i typed it in velocity i think didn't i well every server has to shut down anyway yeah that's the problem so the, the problem i made here is that you also need to put each server in offline mode Well, except for Velocity, that's the only th only server that you don't have to put in offline mode. If you if you want to have it in online mode, if you want it to be in offline mode, you can have it in offline mode. If you want to allow you know crack players, uh, let's see where is online mode. Uh, it's almost pain to find all this stuff. Uh, I'm probably looking right at it, pretty much. It's easier for me, it's fast for me to search for it. No. There we go. So now, if we fire all, everything back online, start with velocity. It doesn't have to be that. You can start velocity last even if you want to. And you can start all the sub service up and then start the master if you want to. Because the sub is gonna wait for the master to come online before they actually boot up. So now when we start server one, server two, and server three, you can see each server coming online, which they are. So now if I connect localhost, I should be hopping in just fine. Yep, and now I'm online on a really, like, there we go. So now I'm online through Velocity, and if we type our servers, you can now see that we have three servers online with one player on each. Now, if I had a bot that could load up some players on here, I could show you the load balancer. But right now, you don't connect through the master at all. The master is just there syncing the data from e between each server. Which is the which it's the actual use case we want to have, because this allows us to infinite scale amount of microservers. It just connect to the master. Each server just connects to the master, and the master does the rest. This can also be set up in very cool ways, which we'll actually go into in the next video. So there will be, there will be a follow up video to this configure in conf helping like you know configuring. The synchronization with plugins and other files. So that's the, in the next video. But this is basically it. This is how you get velocity running with a load balancer, with a few, just a few, just just a few sub servers to go. It's a super simple config. It's super easy to set up. And as you saw, I did, did, did it in what in under twenty minutes. It's a bit, a little bit more complicated than a normal Minecraft server, but it's well worth it in the long run. And I will also link in the video description. I will also link the Discord link to the multi-paper official Discord server where, where the developer is talking and all that, where you can chat with the community, the developers, the moderators, you know. Yeah. So that's basically for this video. And yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.